Hi, welcome to One Foot of Books. My name's Shad. I'm your host. And today is episode 24. I've... I can't remember. Sorry. I just, I just remembered. What episode is it? Ah, anyway, it's around heading towards the mid 20s. Um, I'm coming to you from the Blue Mountains of just outside of Sydney, in Australia. We're in the middle of a um, heat wave. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning and it's early 20s, which isn't too bad yet. It was 40 plus on the Saturday just gone, so it's Tuesday now. That was insanity. Um, yeah, 40 degrees and humid too. Ouch. That was a rough day, rough day, not just for me, for the 5 million plus people in the greater Sydney Basin area. Um, it's, it's heading towards Christmas time. I've just put tinsel up out of my balcony on the railings and it stopped a lot of the uh, local cockatoos coming and sitting on my balcony and screeching and annoying me for food. So that, that's a bit, of a bit of a plus. Yeah, that's quite nice. Cockies can get a bit annoying. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's, uh, mid-December, 2023, one foot of books, I've got one foot of books right here, I'm wearing a singlet, it's quite warm and will get warmer today, here in the Blue Mountains. Anyway, let's get this going, um, got a bit of a selection today, uh, some new, some old, start at the top here, Aldous Huxley, Brave New World, a classic, a classic of the sci-fi genre, uh, speculative fiction. This is a, um, what kind of publication is this? This is from, this is a pretty, uh, it's like almost a public domain version. What's that? There's an old security tag on it. It's a Longman um, edition. Doesn't say when it's from. Hold on, there we go. Uh, this educational edition, 1991. So this is a school book version. And it has like, has like uh, little bits of um, stuff about Huxley's life in it. So it's got a biography. Um, it's got the issues of the Brave New World. A summary of the forward characters. Um, a study program in it. So there you go. I read this years ago. This one, uh, I didn't go through all the other study stuff. But good book. Really good book. Um, it was made into a TV show a few years ago, um, I think there's been a couple of film versions, classic book, classic, so set in like a not too distant future, and everyone is kind of living like these awesome lives, but uh, how awesome are they if you've got to be drugged by, um, what's that stuff called, um, oh god, it's not ambrosia, um, anyway, they're all on this drug that makes things all right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I wonder what it's called now. Damn it. I should have done some, um, it's right on the tip of my tongue. What's the drug in Brave New World? Let me know in the comments. I completely forgot. And it's just, it's right there. It's right, right here. Right on the tip. I know what it is. Uh, Soma. Soma. Everyone's on the Soma. And then um, a couple of people leave the city and go out into the wilds and discover some people that are living out there uh, close to nature. And they bring one of them back and stuff happens. It's been ages since I read this. Great book though. Brave New World, Aldous Huxley. Um, where did I get that from? I got that from the Salvos and Maracle years and years ago. Osho, Intelligence, a creative, creative response to now. This is a series of this kind of publication of um, Osho stuff. Um, Bhagwan Sri Ranj, Rajneesh, who started um, that cult um, up in... The Pacific Northwest in America and pretty much one of the only groups that was charged for terrorism in the United States in the 80s for poisoning the local food supply. Um, but 
there's a really good doco on Netflix um, about the whole movement and Osho. Uh, despite all that, Osho left behind a, a lot of really good uh, writings and thoughts and very much like one of those kind of spiritual guru kind of people. Um, very interesting character. Uh, I'm not condoning anything he did or his followers did, that kind of thing. Um, read up on him. He's a very interesting cat. And he left behind a whole heap of stuff to read as well. I, I don't think I've ever read this. My friend Mayel got me this for Christmas or birthday one time. And I've got a couple of his other books, but I haven't read this one. This one has great chapters, such as What Makes People Stupid. Um... Discovering the off switch. Wow, I got a kind of the gift of being alive. Well, I got to read some of this stuff. Uh, responses to questions: Can computers take over the work of human intelligence? I sometimes feel muddle-headed, as if as if I'm losing my memory. Uh, how can lovers behave more intelligently? Yeah, so it's got a little bit of um, call and response stuff, question Q and A's, um, and just some other little essay stuff that he wrote about the idea of intelligence. Something that the world sorely needs at this moment in time. Uh, we don't, yeah, got that from Mayo. Uh, Roald Dahl, boy, I loved this book when I was growing up. We read it at school. Um, I picked it up at the Salvos um, in Maripol one day. I haven't read it again. Um, thought maybe I could read it to my daughter at some stage. She likes Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the movie. Tried reading it at the BFG. But, you know, trying to read kids' books is can be tough, especially when they're young. But I always like this one. Tales of his childhood, kind of like a little um, autobiography that he did. And there was another one called something else. <laughs> he did another follow-up to that. So that's his childhood. And then there's another one where he goes to World War One or, or World War Two or something like that and um, gets a bit older. Getting older, is that what's called? I don't know. This is a cool book that I haven't finished. I barely started, and that was years ago. It's a really awesome movie called Pontypool made out of it, and this is the book called Pontypool. I found this on a fence outside a block of flats in Marrickville when I was living there. Pontypool changes everything. So I've read a bit of this. It's, it's an interesting book. It's got a, a strange format. Um, how it's written. I'll have to revisit it again. This is a Canadian book. It came out and this one is from 2009. Um, I think it originally came out in 1998. The movie is awesome. The book I attempted but never got that far. Um, all about a, like a language virus that infects people and turns them into zombie-like creatures. But that's the movie. I don't know if that's what it's like in the book. Let me know. Um, if there's background noise like cicadas, um, yeah, you know if the cicadas are going to be getting up at the crack of dawn, it's going to be a hot day. And it's probably going to be a really hot day today. And if there is background noise, it's going to either be cockatoos or cicadas. Cicadas, cicadas, potatoes, potatoes, I don't know. A few comic book series that I've got. Uh, Promethea, Alan Moore. I um, got turned on to this, um, I was going through an Alan Moore stage years and years ago. It's got the whole, there's a five part trade paperback edition that I got. Um, there's probably different ones out there now. This is a fantastic series. Uh, it's a great introduction to the world of magic. Uh, tarot cards, uh, that kind of stuff. The tree of life um, in the Kabbalistic sense. Amazing artwork um, from... J.H. Williams and Mick Gray, and Alan Moore just being his most Alan Moore-ish, uh, yeah, charts the um, adventures of, um, uh, what's her name, someone, um, Sophie Bangs, yeah, Sophie Bangs, she merges with the, um, the story-like idea of a, a, a being called Promethea, who comes along, kind of like a muse, um, an ancient goddess who comes along and and is hosted by a person every once in a while to help 
um, promote the idea of story and imagination and magic in the world and various battles along the way with evil forces uh, both within and without and other Prometheus, um, kind of like proto Wonder Woman kind of stuff, but even that is selling it very short. This is a fantastic series. If you like Alan Moore and you haven't read it, um, strap in, strap in, and maybe strap on. No, uh, strap in. Uh, this is a great series. I, I really love it. I go through it um, once every few years. I go and revisit it. Uh, it's really good and has some. Um, Interesting takes on like the the meaning of the major arcana of tarot cards, the idea of infinity, um, story, the importance of story, imagination, magic. Very cool, very cool series. I love Promethea. It's another one I've read a bunch of times. Grant Morrison, God bless Grant Morrison. Chaos bless Grant Morrison. All Star Superman. This was his take on the. Um, Superman formula. I think he's done one since, um, but this one is very cool. It kind of starts with um, Superman flying too close to the sun. He gets quite irradiated and um, gets too much power from the sun and then starts dying slash becoming more alive in the cosmic sense. And it kind of just charts his... Um, exploration through mortality why what 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 does it mean when superman dies can he die um lex luther comes out and like kind of you know does his thing um jimmy olsen's in there as well lois lane uh, some kryptonites come along uh it's a great book um great series of course the uh, bizarros are in there too uh, fantastic art from Frank Whiteley and Jamie Grant. I think Jamie Grant did lettering or something. But anyway, um, fantastic book. The Man of Steel movies, the Zack Snyder ones, kind of borrowed a lot from this series. But not enough for it to make it as cool as this series. So yeah, I'd highly recommend All-Star Superman uh, by Grant Morrison. Uh, where did I get these from? I got these from King's Comics. Back in the day, a while ago now, back in um, in the city, in Sydney. Oh, my washing's just finished. Just going to go hang out some washing after this. Mm, the life of a YouTuber. Another series that I've got, um, just one book I want to show you, um, instead of a stack so that I'm cheating. Uh, the Invisibles by Grant Morrison. Again, Grant Morrison, fantastic writer, chaos mage, um, all-round trippy dude, trippy dude. This um, I got from, I think I got this from Kings, and then I got a bunch more from Kina Kunya. And this was started back in the 90s and started and finished just after the year 2000, I believe. The, um, the Matrix owes a lot to The Invisibles. If you've read The Invisibles and you saw The Matrix, you'd be like, hmm, seen some of that somewhere, somewhere before. And it's just about a, um, a, a young man slowly awakening to the ideas in the world that um, everything isn't as it seems. Um, there's whole worlds behind worlds, within worlds, on top of worlds. And he gets drawn into um, a mysterious team called the Invisibles who fight beings from evil worlds um, to stop them infecting our world. And um, again, charts his exploration, his journey into that team, into that world, into that society ultra trippy um, kind of doesn't hold it all together but hats off for an, an amazing try Grant Morrison not even a try this is a total success I uh, met Grant Morrison many years ago um, after a Q&A talk at um, Sydney Opera House and he was doing a signing and I went up in my fanboy way not with this with another book and I was just like oh Grant yes so cool dude he's so cool and he's just like yeah i know that he's scottish and i think that's a scottish accent and i was just like man i love the invisibles bro i just wanted to thank you for putting that out in the world it's like a key to a door that um you unlock and there's all sorts of crazy stuff behind that door and it really influenced me for a long time and to this day 
And he was like, oh, thanks, man. Like, you know, that's what I, that's what I did it for, you know. It's, just, it's a terrible, I'll stop it now. But, um, yeah, I had a little conversation with the man as, as long as it takes to kind of, you know, sign a comic book and, and, and share a few sentences. And it's, it's a really good memory of mine, meeting Grant Morrison. Uh, top series. If you haven't read it, it's amazing. Anything by Grant Morrison, I will not anything. Most things by Grant Morrison are really good. The Invisibles is probably like his kind of, I don't. I won't say peak, but his just a prime example of Grant Morrison is the Invisibles, um, and in the kind of spiritual brother sister being the filth. That's a really good read as well. I don't know if I've shown you this one before. I got this one from the Vinnies. It's a um, it's a nineteen forty seven edition of the Fountainhead by Iron Rand. Iron Rand, of course, um, famous for her. Uh, anti-altruism thing, his, uh, what, not his, her, what's that kind of philosophy she started, um, again, it's on the tip of my tongue, like Soma, anyway, she started like a kind of like a philosophical, psychological movement back in the 60s that really inspired neoliberalist ideas, and they came to a head in the 90s, and we're still living in them, um, this has got a bit of paper in it, oh, Where's this from? The Sydney Morning Herald. Someone used a bit of a bookmark from the Sydney Morning Herald. August 3rd, 1965. There you go. I got this at the uh, Vinnie's up in Springwood for $3. Um, it was a little bit battered. I had to glue that back on. And I have read The Fountainhead. Um, I read it many years ago. I read The Fountainhead. I, I, I really like The Fountainhead. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to to around it. I liked it when I read it. I still kind of hold it in high regard now. I, maybe I should reread it again. I'm not sure. I read Atlas Shrugged as well, probably about 10 or 12 years ago. That was a bit of a labor getting through that. And since reading that, I'm, I've been a bit like, nah. there's some stuff in there that's um, questionable, highly questionable, and um, did have a major influence on the society that we're living in now and probably not for the better. Um, we'll show the dust cover for this though. That would have been awesome. That would have been awesome. 1947 edition um, of the Fountainhead. All for $3. There's another one I just picked up off the thing, um, the shelf back here. I think I got it when I got the Fountainhead. Um... Oh, it's a bit moldy. Oh, let me keep an eye on that. Character Reading for Fun and Popularity by Frederick Meir. 1945, The Blackenston Company. Uh, this is an original publication, 1945, printed in the United States of America. This is um, kind of like a precursor to body language reading. So it's like, how to deduce someone's character from their writing style, um, first appearances such as the handshake, build and posture, head shape, <laughs> yeah, probably not that, um, cosmetics and, and accessories, makeup, perfume, the care of the nails, eyeglasses, analyzing character from the face, Noting character from mannerisms and gestures. So I got this. It looked kind of interesting. Um, I haven't read it. Um, and it, and it's, it's a bit moldy. I should probably keep an eye on this. And it doesn't feel damp. I think all that stuff just hanging around. But um, yeah. Pretty fun little book. <laughs> um, I got this one on the weekend. A friend of mine gifted it. A very good friend of mine gifted it to me. All About Love by Bell Hooks. Um, I, she, my friend very much recommended it to me and told me I should read it and then got me a copy. And so I'm like, okay. Um, the word love is most often defined as a noun, yet we would all love better if we used it as a verb, writes Bell Hooks. And she comes out fighting and on fire and all about love. Here, at her most provocative and intensely personal, the renowned scholar, cultural critic, and feminist skewers our view of love as romance. In its place, she offers a provocative new ethic for a people 
and a society bereft with lovelessness. So yes, um, I've thought about it for a long time. The idea of love changes. Um, it's, it's a lot different when you're in your 20s. Like it means different things when you're younger and you get older. And, and then it's just like, it's not, that wasn't love, man. That was probably lust. And you're trying to self-medicate and emotional deprivation. You're looking for stuff that isn't there and stuff that people can't deliver. Anyway, we can go like down those kind of roads quite, quite far. But I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It kind of reminds me um, of the idea of that um, the Eric from book. Um, he wrote a book about love, where I kind of got a few early ideas about that, like how it changes over and so the art of loving, the art of loving. All about love, bell hooks. Um, here's a few books I got from the Vinnies on the weekend. This is when I've started reading the Schopenhauer Cure by Irvin Yalom, who's a um, therapist and a novelist and has written some textbooks as well. So, Schopenhauer Cure, it's a novel. It's about a psychiatrist who's kind of coming to terms with his mortality and decides to revisit some patients from, um, from back in the past that he thought he had failed. One of them is Philip Slate, this kind of cold, um, emotionless, sociopathic, um, sex addict from 20 years previous and he meets up with him and he claims to have been cured of his his desires and neuroses by the works of Arthur Schopenhauer the quite famous uh, philosophical pessimist um, and I've been I, I rewatched the la, the first ep, first season of uh, True Detective which is very much um, has a lot of philosophical pessimistic um themes going through it um pessimism is something that i do daily battle with and um i found this and i was like mm, shopping how cute i feel like reading this and i got it i just kind of it jumped out at me from the shelf and i was like you know what i, I think i'd probably do well in my mind if i read this right now it kind of has come along at the right time i love it when stuff like that comes along especially books movies there's so many movies you flip through them all the time but books, you're forced to spend a bit more time with them. You go over them, you're reading them, you're in, you're, you've got to make time to do it. You can't just sit down. And um, so yeah, I'm about, I got this on um, Saturday. I'm about 100 pages in. It's a good read so far. Good read, a little bit, some of the dialogue and some of the stuff is not great. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading more of this and finishing it. The Schopenhauer Cure. I've got that for $3.00. At the Vinnies. Um, this is from when is this from? 2005. This is another interesting one I got. Um, Nature is a Human Right. It's a collection of essays edited by Ellen Miles. Why we're fighting for green in a grey world. And I saw this and I was like, you know what? I need to start, um, I need to read more perspectives from different parts of the world and people with different colored skin and different um, socioeconomic statuses and cultures and this has got a bunch of them and i'm just like yeah got that that was uh, four dollars so there's um three major chapters in the book one is um welfare why we need nature around us injustice how we're being deprived of nature and change what can what we can all do. And it's got a bunch of different people writing essays, all edited and put together by Ellen Miles, who's like a, um, I think she's a British environmental justice lawyer or something, activist. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to dipping in and out of this. Um, I want to get some different perspectives. I want to get some new ideas and, um, and, and not just from freaking YouTube. Ben Elton. Time, up. time and time again. I've read a couple of Ben Elton's books, but years ago, years and years and years ago. And I like this stuff. Um, I've been a fan of Ben Elton since the young ones back in the 80s. And I got this one, and it kind of, it, it, again, I got this from the Vinnies when I got the Shop and How Cure and that one. Um, it's the 1st of June, 1914, and Hugh, St Hugh Stanton, ex-soldier and celebrated adventurer, is the loneliest man on earth. No one has ever known or 
No one he has ever known or loved has been born yet. Perhaps now they never will be. Stanton knows that a great and terrible war is coming, a collective suicidal madness that will destroy European civilization and bring misery to the millions in the century to come. Um, so somehow he has to change that history, or maybe not. Um, yeah. If you had one chance to change history, where would you go? What would you do? Who would you kill? Sounds like a Seagal movie. Um, yeah, I, was, I saw that and I was like, you know what? I, I like that. Um, I like time travel stuff. I like that Stephen King book, 112363 or whatever it is. Um, the, the Kennedy assassination one, you know, about ch the idea of changing the future and by altering the past. And I saw that and I was like, you know what? That looks cool. I'll give that a read. After the shopping house, yeah. And this is another, the last one I got at the Vinnies. Four dollars. Barbara Leaning, Orson Welles. I've been after an Orson Welles biography for a, a, quite a long time. I know there's a couple, there's a series of two that was done by, um, that are, are quite definitive by a British author, I think. Um, a British biograph, biographist. By, by, yeah. Anyway, um, I saw that. I was like, four dollars. Looks cool. Dust jacket's in really good condition. When is this published? Um, do 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 do. Nineteen eighty four by the looks. Nineteen eighty four eighty five. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, Orson Welles, very interesting man. Um, did some of the great pieces of art of the 20th century, um, and especially Citizen Kane, one that was easily in my top, to easily my top five films of all time. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen Citizen Kane, do yourself a favour, watch it tonight. It'll blow your mind. It's, oh, yeah. And he did the voice of um, the bad guy in the Transformers movie. <laughs> Like, that was his last role. Poor Orson. He is such a game changer that the game didn't want to change and pushed him out of Hollywood. And it's a shame, man. It's a shame he didn't get to live up to his full potential in the cinema world. Um, some might say he reached it in other parts, um, other areas, theatre and, and radio and stuff like that. Did, of course, the War of the Worlds broadcast in the late 30s that freaked out most of America. Did a lot of awesome plays um but movies no the system was against him from the start but at least he got to do citizen kane and to a lesser extent the magnificent ambisons uh, depending on which cut you watch anyway i think i get some breakfast in me and um go to work yeah work 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 thanks for tuning in to one foot of books and that's the one foot for this week any questions any comments leave them below hit like and subscribe i'd really appreciate it i love seeing um just those tiny numbers of views ticking up it's like the uh, something like seventy thousand hours or seven hundred thousand hours are uploaded to youtube every day so i'm really grateful that you chose to spend a smidgen of that with me just going over some books from my shelf and i love that we live in a world where anyone can put up anything um but you can find it and you can kind of you know that that's cool that's enough of my musings for today all right thanks for tuning into one foot of books i'll sit up straight now i feel like i've been leaning forward the whole time bring those shoulders down oh, oh, yeah, oh. see you next time